All right, my name is Dan Hughes from Sioux Valley High School in South Dakota. Um, Nick graciously asked me to be on to be on here, and I'm I'm honored to be on here. Uh, a little bit about my background: I'm the, I'm the head coach um, for many years up until even this up until this previous year. I was the offensive coordinator as well, but I was blessed enough to get a very very brilliant uh, assistant to come in. Um, who's got 20 years of experience, 30 years more of running the wing tee and uh, being at some pretty successful places and being in the OC there. So um, obviously we'd love, we love to have him on board and, and he was able to um, just add some frosting to already the good things that we were doing. Um, a lot of the stuff that we have on here is his, so I'm going to include his contact information. Uh, along with mine, and please feel free to get a hold of us. Uh, like many places out there, here there's no egos, no secrets. Um, we just love to, we just love football and love to help people out. So, um, here's our contact info. Um, I'm hoping you can see it. I'll move everything out of the way. But uh, my name's Dan Hughes. I'm the head coach. Um, obviously, highly involved with the offense. Highly involved with with everything. Um, you know, I could, I could go talk for hours about stuff we do with defense and drills and things like that. Uh, coach Vigdahl, Ken Vigdahl is our offensive coordinator and he's brought a ton of just awesome tweaks and growth and, you know, just great ideas. And he's really, uh, to be honest with you, it's taken us to the next level, which all of us want to get at. So when we started running jet, um, people call it the fly wherever, you know, wherever you're from things like that, you, you, you'll have the same term, but, uh, we call it jet series. In fact, we call it, you know, 50 series, uh, cause there's a whole package that comes with it. But when we started doing this, uh, in 2017, we, we averaged 439 yards of gain, uh, 2018, that's, that's the year that we all have in a public school where we have a small senior class. Uh, in that case, we even had a small junior class. And I, I mean, small, I had, <laughs> We started freshmen and sophomores all over the place. So that it was a very untypical year, but they happened. And we still average close to 300 yards a game. Uh, 2019, we averaged 406. And then this year, 2020, uh, we got to play all nine games uh, or all regular season games and then uh, clear to the semifinals in the postseason uh, with all the COVID stuff going on. We were blessed to get uh, to get 11 games in. So and we averaged 4 and 11 yards per game. And I do want to note with this too, we are famous here for, for calling off the dogs and, and pulling our uh, studs out early. In, in fact, uh, one of these games this year, we had them all out before halftime. So um, this is none of this is like running up the score or any of that stuff that you occasionally see. So um, uh, these are legit yards. In fact, if we were, you know, if we went down that road, obviously we'd be well in 500 and stuff like that. But that's not the point. We just want to be competitive and we want to use space. So this is a typical, this is a typical set that most everybody uses 10 personnel, two by two. Um, there's many different formations to run out of, but, but this particular set, this particular personnel group is common for everybody. And, and obviously, uh, with the set of the tailback where he is right here, we have a numerical advantage. You have your on this, uh, on our screen on our right side. So, so you can see where, you know, if, if they're in this with the four, two, five, look, you know, we got a couple of guys, uh, for the outside and we're outside zoning everything. Uh, we have pin and pull as far as blocking scheme goes. Um, you obviously do that. You pin with the, with the tackle and pull the guard around, but we straight outside zone, everything, you know, being a zone team, um, just simplifies things. I know a lot of you are zone teams as well, so it makes it easy. Uh, before I dive into this too, um, it, it's very important that um, you understand uh, you understand how this all works. I do. It is my wish that you understand and are able to use this uh, with, with your programs. I'm not here to sound technical or anything like that. Although there are some nuances that we could probably go down that path with, but I want you to understand this and I want you to have the courage to implement it uh, with the things you do already because this is uh, in and of itself. There, there's just how it works with space, your current running game, your current uh, scheme that you use, uh, you will be able to add this to it uh, to help make this make yourself harder to defend. 
And what I'm talking about is moving the defense. The defense wants to know where the ball is going to go, and they want to fit their gaps. They want to be aggressive at the line of scrimmage, especially especially in the run game. Now, obviously, it's a pass game. They want to hit their drops, but they want to get to the ball, and they want to get there quickly, and they want to do it as efficiently as possible. When you introduce this horizontal motion, this horizontal movement, and the ball potentially going to an area of space on the perimeter, the defense is going to have to move. They're going to have to move in a way that's counterproductive. They're going to have to move laterally. Somebody from the box of the defense, from the heart of the defense, is going to have to leave, and and that's going to give you advantage yeah. in the middle of the field. So the, the technique of it, uh, before I dive into that, I do want to show you something. In fact, I'll, I'll just dive in. I'll tell you the technique as we play this. But we're getting the ball to a pretty good athlete there. And we're getting it out in space. In fact, uh, being a Zoom guy, I'll slow it down. You can see number five, the ball is right here. We just got the handoff. We got numbers and we got space. And that's as good as it gets in football. You got numbers and you got space and you got a good athlete carrying the ball. So this is something that they're going to have to honor. Um, it, it, if we if we dive into a few of these clips too, you'll notice, guys, we're not exactly um, bodying up on everybody and doing things perfectly on the perimeter. Um, I, I would look, you know, I would love to show you where our guys blocked all their guys and drove them. But to be honest with you, when you're playing good teams, sometimes the best you can do is just get body on body and. If you got more space to work with as a good athlete, it's it's advantage you. This is a good angle. So what we want to do, there's there's under center and there's gun. Okay. Under center is a little bit different animal, but what we want to do is snap the ball about when the jet guy gets to the butt of the guard. All right. And then while the ball snapped, you want to you want to get the ball to him in the play side a gap all right now there's just this is a very uh simple easy high probability exchange rarely if ever do we fumble it so i want everybody to have the courage to be able to do this it is a very sure play and there's a lot of bang for your buck it's not like the you know the veer game where you got to rep 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 and have veer period this is something that the kids can do but he's gonna try to get in play side a gap and if you look here Here's our tight end. He's flexed. Here's a blocking back, and we even move the fullback over. We got numbers, and they're just going to zone first guy outside. And they're going to get body on body, hat on hat, and we're going to be out in space. The defense is going to be stressed hardcore. These guys, these linebackers, safeties, they got to fly to the to the alley. They got to fly to the perimeter, or we're getting yards. Now, this play was a good one, and this will illustrate – I'm backing up right now, but this is a little straight fact that we didn't really execute our blocks. Um, and you always strive to do that. I'm not giving these guys a pass or pretend it's okay to be lazy. But number three right here doesn't block anybody. He just doesn't. But he's out there. And number five can use him to dip in and out, or he can just cut it up and get yards. In this case, he cut it up, got back outside, and took it to the house. Now, number five is a pretty good athlete. He's a D2 guy. He's going to go play D2 ball. But that's the point. We have a good athlete with number advantage in space, and that's as good as it gets. I'll go to a different team. This is a good clip. This is a good clip to show you all I can. We want to get it to the outside. We want to get outside the numbers. Sometimes, all right. You got you, you could cut it up early here, but the real yards, the big plays happen when you're able to get it out to the numbers and wider. This one, the numbers are right here. We took out past the numbers clear to the sideline. And notice how we're just getting body on body. And then big play, we're gone. And here it is again.
get it outside, get it to the numbers, get it outside the numbers, and you will have a big play. There is space out there. And it takes a lot of people on the defense getting outside to stop this thing. What you'll notice, this is a, this is a common two by two formation. Everybody has this, you guys have it. Um, every spread team has it, every wing tee team has it. But you have a numbers advantage. Right now we got four guys down here. That tackle's gonna pull. He's actually gonna, he's actually gonna zone block it. First guy outside. The guard's actually gonna come here. So unless there's a violent outside move by him, he's gone. Number three's coming here. Number five's coming here. Number six is getting the ball. So we got numbers. We got space also. You can't beat that. That's that's the objective of every offense. Get numbers to, and space. That's what you need to make fire. That's the same equation no matter what offense you're running. Here it is again. Got a nice block on the edge there. We got space. Got a nice play. Same play, slow it down so you can see a little better. Now all that, the shotgun snap and the handoff, all that's just a rhythm between your quarterback and your and your running back, so a receiver. It's just something you, you just got to get timing with. Um, what I would caution against is bringing a guy in motion from all the way outside. You want to have them be relatively close. So um, this group of plays here, I want to show you this. We play in the dirtiest, nastiest weather in the world. Okay, this is South Dakota. This is, <laughs> it's bad. All right, so this is our first round of our playoff games, guys. This is October. This is early October. This is Chamberlain, South Dakota. And you can see we bladed off the field. All right, and this is, uh, we had probably a foot of snow, I believe before or two days before this game but so this is a very sound thing and i want to emphasize that like this is not ha this does not have to be something you shy away from just because the weather it's raining or this or that it, it is a sure handoff these are sure exchanges and we don't spend any more time on them than maybe you do so i, I want you to feel comfortable implementing this regardless of the circumstance you can see we got numbers we got space, we're on the edge. They're slipping and sliding around. It's snowing and blowing. <laughs> you can see the snow pile is about as high as the other team on the other side. We pushed it to their side, uh, uh, that's when we did it. So, um, and this is about a 30 mile an hour wind out of the north. So it's freezing cold, but it's, it's a sure thing. It's as sure as, you know, the dive, it's as sure as, you know, any other exchange that there is, it's just a rhythm that you, you know, when you do it, you just got to keep repping it. This is what you just saw. Okay. It is this 10 personnel and to communicate in its right 38. Okay. Uh, 38 being the jet to the right. Um, that's not exactly what we use it here at Sioux Valley. I figured some people would probably that we play pretty regularly would see this eventually, but, but that's how you would communicate. It's that simple. So you can go no huddle. You can go, um, uh, you can go in huddle. You can go in a sugar, sugar, huddle, whatever you want to do. You can, you can, uh, you can make it easy to communicate. Now at the beginning, uh, I showed you a formation where we moved the tailback over to, to be up a man. So this is what you saw at the beginning and you can see the numbers advantage here. We just add just tag near. So we're in heavy personnel 22. So you go one coach, our personnel coach would yell heavy, 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 or 22, 22 and personnel run on a field. And our signaling coach would signal in uh, right near 38. That's it. And the quarterback would communicate that right near, you know, a, whatever the, whatever uh, lingo you want to use to, to camouflage that 38 a little bit, that's it. So you have extra numbers 
and and believe me, they'll li- they'll align like this against you. They'll they'll straight up play you because they're aligning you on the ball generally. But that gets you a man up pretty easy. And then obviously you can have some counters going backside. This next clip here, every now and then the defense will shift over. Here in, in this slide, I have them shift over their second level, which is what you'll typically see when they shift. Sometimes they'll bring a safety down, but guess what? All you did is move the tail back over. That's all you did. So it isn't like you reinvented everything. Now just run the jet back this way from right to left. You see how this is, gets to be an easy game to get into a good play. So they're, they're, the box is packed. You got numbers advantage to our right. They're aligning or adjusting pre-snap to that. Run it back to the left. This is just easy. Just check with me. So we got right near bomber check. Bomber being a way to communicate jet. Bomber check. Because we're you could slide all kinds of guys over to one side. If the defense moves, all you need is one blocking back on that back side. Bam, you're gone. Run jet the other way. Maybe you're running it with a little bit bigger guy. You're not using your uh, tip guy you typically do, but that's okay. Just run it back the other way. Guess what? You got one block you need to make here. That's it. So you got jet, jet with numbers, and jet back to the weak side. Simple. And how to communicate it's down there. Simple. All right. I'll get back to our clips here. I want to transition to the box plays. Because you've seen Jet a few different ways. You've seen it uh, under center. You've seen it out of gun. And you've seen it with the fullback or the running back set near. So you have an extra blocker. Well, ultimately, you're going to get some fast flow from from every level. The DN, uh, the linebackers, they're going to start moving on you. They'll even start aligning pre-snap on you where they think the Jet's going to be. And, and you cannot do that defensively without leaving holes in the box. So now we're running in. You know, it's post-snap, there's an element uh, of guesswork involved, but you're running into five-man box routinely. We have tight ends in the game. We have blocking backs in the game. We, we're we not exactly, you know, spread, and we're running into a five-man box. This is where you get to see all of our, our games. We're getting 400, 450, 500 yards offense a game, and we're running gap scheme. We're running power. We're running trap. But we're running in against five guys. So this jet game has accomplished all that. Show you a few more here. Oh, that's a good compliment to the jet. Jet motion one way and we'll pitch it to the tailback the other. I could talk for an hour on that play. That's pretty good too, but you see it's just a compliment. People start getting all motioning and doing auto blitzes and stuff. Let's pitch it back to the running back. So that's a real good play. Wide receiver did a good job working his block, but guys, you got numbers and you got space. That's, that's it. That's what we're after. Numbers and space. So this, this is a fourth down play too. Um, this, this is akin to dive power, any inside zone handoff. We do not feel like our jet handoff and exchange is any different so much that we will we will run it on fourth down. You'll notice it's fourth down. All these guys are packed in here. These linebackers are getting ready to auto blitz. They're thinking sneak. They're thinking dive. They're thinking inside zone. They're thinking, you know, you just want to get a few yards here. But now we're gonna give it we're gonna give the jet. We're gonna get one block on the edge. That's it. That's it. It's I mean it's fourth down. There's they're packing. There's nobody else. There's nobody else. We're gone. Now, this ain't Joe Schmo either. This is the like, number five team in the state. This is the second round of the playoffs. All right. So this ain't like, you know, we're playing nobody here. This like, That's a good team. Coach is a good guy, too. They got some good players. And then, they, you know, this is second round in the playoffs. There no, there's no gimmies left. You know what I mean? That's fourth down, and that's in the slop field, too. You see the snow pile there? You know, this this is not good conditions. This There's a lot of stuff to worry about here. But we need to run sure plays. 
So back to back to the box plays. All right. So now we've established jet. We've established a perimeter. We know they're moving people. Their linebackers are going to have to fly out of there. Uh, so we got to have a we got to have a power game. Okay, we got to have a box game because they're vacating the box to defend our jet. This is where it gets really good. By the way, I chose these. This is another good opponent. This is a, a league league team. They had nine wins last year. This is a, this is a good team we're playing against here. It's well coached. Um, I chose these just based on the view so you can see things really well. But we're going to go jet from left to right. Okay? The jet's going to come across this way. From left to right. Now, they're going to start vacating these players over here on this side. They're going to be influenced. Even this Mike Backer is going to be influenced by by the Jet, and the, and they better be, because our our you know our guy will will score on you, and and you got one like that too. There's one in your school somewhere. Just get him the ball in space. So, but we're going to take our numbers, number three, number sixty nine, number five. All these guys, we're just going to down block, just straight down block like you would outside veer anything. All right, first guy inside, go get him. We're going to let those guys be influenced. If I can slow this down enough, too, I want you to watch the white jerseys here. Look where they're going. They're running laterally outside. Our quarterback has the ball. This guy has the ball. We're gone. We did now. I would love to tell you that we just mowed everybody over and had the best down blocks in the world and just crushed them and. I'm the best coach ever. I'm the best old line coach you've ever seen, but that's just not realistic. We're playing competition that's as good or better than us, just like you are. We got to move them, and we moved the defense on this. We moved them, just flat, took half their defense, and they ran themselves outside. There they go. Down blocked everybody who stayed. Quarterback's gone. Backside corner makes the tackle at the two. Here's a good view. If you watch these people right here, maybe even this guy. Heck, I think we even back cut on this guy. They're gone. They're all flying out here. And they better because we got numbers. We're set near. We got guys. We're going to get them hooked. We're going to get outside if they don't. They have to do this. They have to. Here he comes. There's moving already. Look at the space open up right here. This is off tackle, guys. Y'all, some of you guys are running power and veer right now into a loaded box. And you have fa one fast guy in your school, and you're running power in a loaded box. Put the jet in. Down block with everybody. Here's our pulling guard. Here's our running back. We're walking into the end zone. We'll walk in. Quarterback has the ball. Jets going. Guards pulling. There's nobody there. This guy had nobody to block. Everybody else is running outside. And this is this is scheme we put in, you know, four years ago. We ran power and, and veer. Well, that's what we were, by God. And we would run it into nine-man boxes. We would. And we'd get against somebody that's ultimately down the road in the semifinals, finals, you know, even before then, in the in the quarterfinals, you're playing good teams that can, you know, make it hard. Don't have the have the jet in. It's a sure handoff. It's as sure as anything. Make it easy on you. Have that defense do what they don't want to do. Is so run sideline to sideline. So this is power read. We're just going down. This again, this is a, this looks like a, a 50 front that we drew up, which you're going to see everything. So if you're in a spread look, this is an empty look. You're going to have two eye safeties. They'll roll one down. They'll wind one down. You'll have a numbers advantage play side, and these guys will be flying out of the box. Uh, you can make it a read. We've done that. Um, we'll typically read the second level because this guy's gone. We already know he's gone. But if the linebacker, linebacker leaves, we're going to keep it and go. And he'll show that pre-snap sometimes. There's so many auto blitzes and things like that that you see. So, 
All right, passing game, passing game. So you can formation it with a tailback or an empty set, uh, tailback on a two by two. So you're motioning him and you can get the jet to him. You still got blockers and you got space. But what you also have is four vertical threats. So you got four verts plus leave the box. It just adds a whole nother dimension to it. So hopefully my, so we got the passing game off the jet here, off the jet action. action. And you can see right here, this is a pretty condensed set. It's a pretty traditional set too. If you're a wing T or a single wing or whatever, um, you know, there's tight ends all over the place. And then there's, there's two wing backs. And so basically your defenders are, are concentrated right here, but you know, the great thing about football is you can run to space. We'll give them a jet action. We've got a great big fullback in there. They'll think maybe he's getting the ball on a complimentary play, but we're going down the field and there's, you're limited by your creativity. But if you look here, we just ran a vertical concept. We got two guys he could have thrown it to. We hit the seam and score. So this is the first game of the year coming off COVID and stuff too. So we had a whole lot, had a whole lot of time to prepare. That just tells you the simplicity of this. But this concept here, so you got tight end, right? And you got this wing back. We're gonna run him to the numbers and up. This wing's going to come underneath and run inside the hash. And they got to scramble to figure out who's getting the ball when it looks like this dude is. So you have this going on and we're utilizing all of this space out here, uh, deeper than the, the referee outside of the hash. It's, it's just dirty. They're trying to figure out how to stop, stop the jet and they get one down the scene that they don't even see coming. Heck, they run right by it. So just put it on him and that's that. That's, we call that, that switch. Um, I'll get in the lingo of that too, but you would just, you would just tag your jet with the different starting number, like 88 switch, pretty simple stuff. All right, the next one here, a little different formation. We flexed out the tight ends. Get in the scene. I mean, they run right by you. It's not the other way around. I mean, they're, they're thinking they got the ball. Now, one of the, one of the tricks to this too. So this person right here is going to uh, be the decoy. He's, he's getting the jet fake to him. He can run about two feet behind the quarterback. Okay. It's a proximity fake. The linebackers right here and the DBs and stuff to them, they don't notice that it's, it's a depth of field issue. They, they, to them, it looks like he's getting the ball to us. It's very sound. It's very secure. We do not have to worry about uh, the jet guy bumping the ball from the quarterback's hand or anything. So it's a proximity fake on those. He'll take it. He'll take it 24 inches deeper. And we do use 24 inches when we teach the kids and we'll say two feet. I want to be precise as I can with them. So we'll say 24 inches. He's going to grab that 24 inches. Fullback's going to protect backside. We'll get our feet set and let it fly. Our quarterbacks have a pretty good arm, by the way. That dude was by himself. Those DBs start to peak. You just let them have it. Pretty good run after the catch here too. This guy's pretty good. And he's a junior. We get him back next year. So all this stuff's gravy, of course, but look at this at the end. He, he, <laughs> he wasn't going to be denied. He wanted it. He got it. They got, he scored on that. I got to watch that again with him. That was awesome. So. Here's the beginning of the play, making the jet. The defense is moving. This linebacker's fitting. The DBs are peeking. We're spinning around. Bam. DB is cooked. In fact, it looks like we underthrowed that quite a bit. It was about 55 yards, 60 yards in the air, but 
think too many guys that can sling it out there past past 50 with any accuracy. Just run after the catch stuff's athleticism. I'm not saying I coached this up, but if you got a special guy that can do this, hey, take a look at it. All right, I'll show you this again. This is another playoff game in the snow and all that cold. You'll notice the proximity fake. We'll see the DB bite. Now what's cool is um, you stay on your landmark. If, you're, if your landmark's the top of the numbers, this DB that's assigned to cover the, the wide receiver out here, he may slip to the outside wanting to fit the, you know, his, his run responsibility. In that case, you just bust inside, which is what you'll see here. But stay on your landmark, get right back over top and stack it on your landmark. Quarterback's got to get his back foot in the ground. There we are. Went inside, stacked back on his landmark, touchdown. Late in the year, playoff touchdown. All right, this is a good one. Uh, this this is a really good team. They were, uh, I believe they were 11-1, and one, uh, ranked second. But this is off the jet. This is off the jet with a counter action. We call this cap. We got it from those guys out of Glenbard West. Um, we speak at Glacier every year. But this is just another way. We're faking here. We're faking here. Hitting the scene. So you can see there's less that safety's playing super deep, which he was there. That's a pretty good concept to have. Bacon here, bacon here, counteraction pass, cap. Hit the scene. All right, so let me go back to so this is essentially what you got. Your creativity limits uh, what you have. If, if the DBs are rolling, um, you can run a drive concept. You can high-low the safety. You can high-low the corners. Um, to be honest with you, that's a whole other presentation. We could talk for two hours on that. But what I'd like to show next, and I may go back and review uh, from the end zone, uh, how we blocked you and do the handoffs just to leave you with some good stuff. But these are the new developments here. All right, and this is what Coach Vigdahl really brought um, that has really changed and made us even that much more explosive. So uh, we'll just refer to this as the pre-snap key screen. So what we're doing, this dotted line down here, this dude's, this is all pre-snap, okay? He is sprinting out of the box, or out from his wing position, he's sprinting out there as fast as he can pre-snap, knowing that we're going to have a numbers advantage on the perimeter. And you can invent whatever screen you want to throw out here. The easiest one to explain is the bubble. All right, so if this guy's running a bubble, the defense is going to have to bring somebody out there or we're going to be three on two with space and a good athlete having the ball. All right? So that's the premise here. It's just like the jet, except maybe he's getting the ball out here by the numbers instead of at the quarterback. Okay. That's, that's how we think of it. That's how our minds work uh, when it comes to this. It's a pre-snap key screen. All right. Now I, I'll get into, this is real, this is all pre-snap and real easy to teach a quarterback. What does he do with the ball? If, they sprint a linebacker out or a safety moves. Okay, so we're gonna get into that here. I wanna show you some clips of it first. Just so you don't think I'm joking about all this stuff. In this particular one, we start him right here and run the bubble. Okay. So you'll notice on this play, this is probably a better one to lead off with. On this play, what we have is a key screen that's all pre-snap. All right, so he probably snapped the ball a little early. I'd love to have him out here. But you have the pre-snap motion, which is influencing and moving the defense. These guys are flying out there. Then you have the box play, all right? So we have a play 
in the box. In this case, it's trap. Because we feel if they vacate this area, the space will be here, we can run trap. You can run inside zone there. Whatever play gets the ball here is relevant. All right? What you don't see on the backside is we have a backside Cadillac, backside post. Um, and that's for if the safety runs. Okay? So in this particular play, the defense moves. We have a light box. So the quarterback gives the trap. And he takes it however many yards. This is a real good angle to see it here too. So on this play, we're going to motion out the tailback. He's going to run a bubble. If no one goes with him, we know we have a numbers advantage out there. He's going to get the ball. If a linebacker moves out, We'll run the box play, which in our in our world, we run a lot of trap right here, okay? Finally, if this free safety right here vacates, now we run the backside glance or Cadillac, whatever you guys call it, depending on what your lingo is, okay? So it's a one, two, three. Now what's different about this and what makes it great, guys, this is all pre-snap. The quarterback can breathe and settle, make his decision, and then snap the ball. We're not trying to do something while bullets are flying. Our guy is motioning out. Somebody from their defense motioned out. Or they stayed still, and we're just going to throw the key. Let's see what happens on this play. The safety moves. So he's going to throw the backside post. Again, this is, we're still thinking jet here in our mind. We're going to line out here. They may be man to man on us. The, the most common defense that we see is cover, cover one. They're going to have a man for everybody. But we're going to run this guy out here pre-snap, and we know we're going to have a numbers advantage out there. Um, so they have to move somebody out. Once they move somebody out, depending on which level he comes from, we either have the box play, if it's the linebacker level, or the glance backside, if it's the DB level, which in this case, it's the free safety. So that's where we're going. Boom. Here it is from the side view. This is this is a high school level uh, play for your quarterback. Okay, this ain't college or whatever where we're trying to interpret on the fly uh, where to settle down or whatever. Okay, this is this is a math problem. It is we're running an extra number out outside to have a numbers advantage. If we got it, we're throwing it. If they as a consequence, run a guy out there. Okay, we got a box play if it's a linebacker, or we got a backside glance if it's a safety. That's it. That's you guys can handle that. And you know, there's there's obviously teaching involved, but y'all can handle that. Safety vacated. We're throwing that post. Bam. Touchdown. And that's the semifinals. That game's played in November. Okay. That's a good it's a good team. That's state champions right there. And we're playing them. We felt we could score every time we had the ball. All right. So I mean, that's that's what we're that's where we're at right now. Again, you can play with the formation. Uh, empty's good, but we're motioning this dude out here. We're gonna be three on two, unless they bring a linebacker out. Okay. We got the glance backside if they if they were to bring the safety out. So this is we call this nuts right fifty two key three X. So you have Bubble to the right, plus a box concept, which in our case is trap, plus a backside wide receiver free access right here. Now, common sense dictates dictates the access. that They know they're going post on this. All right. Now, if there's some deal where the corners play in the window, obviously you could run a fade or run whatever concept. 
is going to fit the, wherever the space is. But this is this is real simple stuff that you can teach your kids. And here's a progression that we teach. And I got it labeled here. Uh, if you want to take a picture of this slide, but if nobody moves, this dotted line is the pre-snap motion from the running back. He's going to run out to the slot side to get a numbers advantage. If they don't move, we're going to throw them the bubble. We're going to throw it to them. Okay. There's also uh, schools we haven't done it yet, but they'll have two or three different screens out here. In addition to the bubble, whatever screen you're accustomed to, you'll have a numbers advantage. Okay. Throw it. If a linebacker, if a second level guy comes out, okay, and your quarterbacks know who that is, if the second level guy comes out, he's just going to give the block, the box play, be it inside zone, trap, whatever, whatever gap scheme you have, power's good, but y'all, y'all have that, okay? And third, if a DB moves, if the free safety specifically moves, you're going to throw the glance, you're going to throw the access, okay? So that's how the whole this is the whole shebang on that. And it's all jet. And I'll show you a few of them here. It's, it's jet. It's just the new development on it. It's instead of handing the ball off by the quarterback uh, and making a, a you know, pre-play guess at where the space is going to be, we're just going to let the defense show their hand, and then we're going to put the ball in one of those three places. So on this particular one, the, there's a tailback. We're aligned with the tailback. Um, this guy right here is another wingback. We're going to run the tailback out. If you and our our quarterback is the end of the year, he's pretty comfortable with this. But you'll see this linebacker right here is going to honor that motion. When he honors that motion, the quarterback knows he's going to give the trap. Okay, linebacker honors the motion. We run the trap. Now this is a pretty good player, so he scores, but you plug any guy in there and that's 10 yards. So we ran the trap uh, into a five-man box there and score. If they'd have kept it, if they'd have kept the six-man box, seven-man box, we'd have thrown the key. Okay, here's an end zone copy. Again, this is semifinal game. We're going to motion this running back out, okay? If somebody uh, if somebody goes with him, we'll run the box play. If a safety goes with him, we'll throw the we'll throw the backside. Well, let's see what happens. If nobody goes with him, we're just going to throw it. It looks like the defense is stationary. So. We're motioning him out. The defense is stationary, so the quarterback knows he's throwing the key. Boom. Catches it. We've got three on two out there. Free safety makes the tackle. So the cool thing is, back when I was running veer and doing all that stuff, um, we would live with the fact that the quarterback made the wrong read. Okay? So we would just be like, Hey, that's, that's casualty. That's part of a life for our choice. If you watch this play over and over, like we have, we have the key screen on the perimeter. We have a numbers advantage there. Plus we're running trap into a six man box with this linebacker being influenced by the key screen towards the, towards the snap. So we got kind of a five and a half man box there. And also, if you'll notice, this backside glance, that's also wide open because on the snap or even a few seconds before the snap, the safety leaves. So when we have a quarterback making a decision in this scheme, we're going to be rewarded for whichever one he chooses. <coughs> Pardon me. We're not going to have a negative play like we would with the option or our quarterback taking a, a big hit like we would with when we were running a ton of veer. And I love the veer, but <clears throat> there's just a greater upside uh, when you don't have a perfect read in this. See the safety move? We could have thrown that backside glance for six. <clears throat> the linebacker's influence, we could have run the trap in the box. 
So you, you, we couldn't lose here on this play. And again, this is this is a 13 and 0 state championship team we're playing here. This is not me picking a you know an average team and bragging up about how much better we are. Okay, this is uh, this is legit. Again, this is the second round of the playoffs. <clears throat> the cool thing is that when you're a, when you're a true spread team, and we're not, but you can run the quarterback. So right now, this play, we're going to motion. We're in a two-by-two two set. Might be three-by-one set. But we're going to motion the running back towards the camera, out of the box, and then we're going to run the quarterback. And we all know when we run the quarterback, we're a plus one. We have an extra uh, player blocking. If they vacate the box, which they do, look at this box we're running in, guys. There's there's nobody. There's three down linemen. This is DN's leaving, and I, I think they have one linebacker left. It's pretty much a four-man box. We just run the quarterback trap. You know, that's that's probably the easiest 10 yards where, you know, you're gonna get. And again, let me look at the look at the conditions. This is sloppy, muddy. This is second round playoff. This is a good team. It's a top five team. So, you know, this 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 is as good as it gets. This is early in the year when it's all nice out. But you'll see, especially early in the year, this defense is not moving. We're running this this jet guy across, and instead of you know we we see it as. We're getting him the ball outside the hash instead of at the quarterback. Okay. We're just getting him out in space quicker. If the defense isn't going to move pre-snap, that's what they're going to get. It's too easy. We don't even block anybody on that play. Yards all over the place. So there is. I can show you a few end zone plays. Um, I don't want to get my contact information up there for you, but uh, they're, they're, you're really limited uh, to your creativity about, you know, how, where you want to put the ball when the defense is moving. I do want everybody to feel comfortable uh, installing this because the the running game that you have right now does fit. There isn't anything. That doesn't fit. So long as you can put the ball right or left, like we all can with zone or gap scheme, you, what you're doing right now, whether it's under center or out of the gun, this fits with it. And it just adds an extra element. And to be honest with you, I can't hardly watch a, watch an NFL game anymore without seeing jet motion two, three, four times. I know Sean McVay has really, really used it. But, you know, when you're playing fast flowing linebackers and you're playing safeties, when you're playing safeties that can, uh, you know, come and make a tackle close to the line of scrimmage, you know, you gotta, you gotta get them moving. You gotta get them, get them going east and west. You can't have them fitting on you. So, you know, this play uh, specifically, there wasn't a whole lot of blocking going on here, guys. The, this is space plus a good athlete plus, you know, some good players getting in the way. Um, technique wise, I haven't dove too much into that. But this is our blocking back here. He's actually going to block like this. We're not going to we're not going to face a nine tech up or when we're running. We're we're getting our palm in their armpit and we're running with them. Okay, and we're we're not facing them up like you know typically like typically you see. So he's going to try to get his right arm underneath him and just cut him off. That's just making one guy miss. So. A uh, few key points, uh, if, if you need them, the, the jet guy, the guy getting the ball, you've got to condition him mentally to make one guy miss. Okay, that's your job. We're asking everybody else to block. We're asking you to make one guy miss. We're also formationing it so we get an extra blocker on the perimeter. Okay, so we have an extra guy, plus you make a guy miss. We should be we should be getting yards the whole time. Uh, very few, I don't know if we even had a negative play on jet this year. If we did, it was from... Just some unforeseen thing that I'm not even sure happened. But it, it's a pretty sound deal. Again, 
uh, just reviewing again. We will move our we'll move our fullback over so we have an extra blocker. Look how the defense, the Lions guys, that they'll line straight up on you. This is a team we play every year. You know, the thirty miles away at rival. Um, so, you know, use it up, formation it, make make them adjust. Take that to the sideline too. Look how far this goes before we cut it up. This well outside the numbers. I mean, how would you like to defend that? That to me is asking kids to sprint their whole defense out there with a numbers disadvantage. You know, you're going to have to dream up something and then obviously we're going to have to dream up a compliment to it, but show you one more here. I know on zoom, we want to slow it down a little bit, but this is the same formation. You could probably dream up a pretty good play action pass out of that formation too. Set near. But you got a good guy in numbers and space. There he goes. So that's the jet new developments. Um, uh, my name's Dan Hughes. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the head coach. And then uh, Coach Vigdahl, Ken Vigdahl is the offensive coordinator. Um, he's smarter than me, and he knows more about football and how to play the whole chess match. Uh, as good as anybody, but there's our email addresses there. I can make them a little bit bigger so y'all can see it. But, uh, you know, it, it's something that if, if you want to get more familiar with it, get a hold of me. Um, I help coaches all the time with this. In fact, I had a, a coach email from Northern California uh, yesterday and today. Um, we also, you know, we go all over the place. Um, I bring my coaches. We've been to Chicago. We've been to Denver. We've been to Kansas City. Um, we've spoken on this. We've been doing it uh, for a long enough time now where, you know, it, it's pretty much, I don't want to say it's an old hat, but we could tell you what, what defenses are going to do to, you know, try to defend you and try to make, make uh, you know, attempt to stop you anyway. And I just want to leave you too. I've had some pretty young teams and some pretty average athletes get some pretty big numbers and pretty big yards with this. Um, in fact, this number five that we had, he was, he was our classifications player of the year this year. And in part, it was because he's a very, very good football player. He works very, very hard, but we were playing in a scheme where he could thrive. He was getting the ball with numbers out in space. And whenever the defense would overcompensate, we'd hit him with the box play or we'd hit him with the seam with the play action pass, you know, and he was part of all those things. So, um, it's just, it's, it's a way to to be quite frank with you, have a scheme that your kids can believe in and that, you know, you're, you're going to have a chance in the big games when you have, you know, a team that's, that's probably a defensive full of athletes that's better than you. But again, thanks for having me.